right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I am joined by Brian Phelps, who is in Utah. How are you doing, Brian? Hey, I'm doing great, John. How are you? Yeah, and I, as usual, am here in blue sky, sunny San Diego. Um, so um, Brian is uh, runs a company called uh, Big Leap, and he's a reputation as a trusted expert, a, f- a founder and CEO of Big Leap. He's built a company that provides all the flexibility and communication of a boutique agency combined with the scale and accountability of a global firm. I love that. That's a, that's a great combination. Um, and what we want to talk about today is, well, let's face it, that age-old problem is still that age-old problem about marketing and sales or sales and marketing, depending on your point of view and which group you happen to belong in. So we want to talk about today is five things salespeople can do to actually help their marketing teams. Yeah, absolutely. So, we- yeah, I was going to say, so Brian, um, you know, you work, I mean, you're a marketing agency, but you work with a lot of companies and obviously that whole sales marketing conflict thing just seems to endure and endure, but nobody ever seems to come up with really practical solutions for it. Yeah, for sure. We, you know, like you said, we have a, uh, our own sales and marketing team and then we work with a lot of marketing teams. And as we get into, you know, the marketing services and things like that, mm-hmm. it kind of always trickles into the sales world. And so we've been able to see uh, good and bad examples, I guess, of how different sales teams and marketing teams are able to work together or not work together and, and what the impact and result of that is. And obviously in, in today's world uh, where everything is being done much more digitally and virtual and all of that kind of thing is it seems to me that if ever there was, if ever there was a time when sales and marketing really had to get their alignment to, and get their act together, this is it. Yeah, absolutely. We're you know, totally new world right now and different economy and that actually kind of leads right into the the first tip. And if you're, yeah. if that's okay, John, I'll jump into that. Yeah, let's go. One thing that we're we're seeing right now is obviously just lots of shifts in the in the market and everybody's market really. And so the first tip is just discussing that between the sales and marketing teams. Marketing teams historically have built personas and things like that based mm-hmm. off of the last five years, which was a completely different environment than it is today. And and hopefully some marketing teams are adjusting, but nobody really knows the needs of those people better than the sales team. They're right there on the front lines. And so we love to see the sales team and that marketing team come together to discuss what they're seeing right now. Um, Things have changed from value-based type marketing and sales to, hey, I need to save money and and do these different things. Our contract terms matter more than ever. The sales team can really lead in, in providing that information to the marketing team so that marketing team can really adjust the messaging and things like that to address that right up front. Yeah, and that's such a it, it's such a great point. Is like, I mean, they should be having these conversations anyway. But as you say, unfortunately, yeah, when times are good, people tend to drift apart. Um, mm-hmm. And but now, as you say, uh, if your your business your your buyer could be different. Your buyer, uh, their needs, as you say, could have changed to uh, to saving money to to the cost and all of that things that maybe weren't as important to them a little while ago are really important to them. Now, or maybe you have to shift focus to an adjacent market or sell a little bit differently. And unless you have that conversation and explain that to marketing, marketing is not going to know that. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. We've been very fortunate over the last several years to have a <laughs> growing, quickly growing economy pretty much around uh, the country. And now, you know, that's that's just shifted a little bit. Hopefully we'll get back to that. But yeah, we have to be a little bit more agile now and the marketing team really needs to adjust to that. And so what they're out there putting out there to the world really matches uh, the needs of that new buyer. And then of course, what the sales team's seeing. So yeah, the sales team can really help influence that by proactively kind of bringing that to the marketing team. Yeah. So what's number two? So the second thing we're looking at out there was just finding ways uh, to build that relationship between sales and marketing teams. Obviously, companies we work, our, our team, for example, we only have about eight people in that sales and marketing organization, mm-hmm. but we work with companies that have hundreds of people. And you just see this really big divide often. And, th- and that's kind of the root of all this. And so, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, or what some we've seen really successful is having, again, the sales team lead and trying to build and develop those relationships. We all like working with people we like, right? If you mm-hmm. prefer to work with someone there versus even someone that's doing a great job, you don't really like them. So really focusing on you know, building that relationship and just being proactive and, and actually carving out the time to go and do that it could be 
grabbing a coffee or going bowling, doing those things, but getting to know those people, I mean, you start giving the benefit of the doubt to each other and it helps maybe mend any relationships that, you know, have, yeah. have been harmed over the last several years. And one of, one of the things that I always recommend is is to have at least some of the marketing team like join. You know, most sales organizations have calls, whether it, you know big group calls, whether it's weekly or biweekly or whatever. But marketing, even just joining those calls, even if it's just on an, in a listening mode, it can be so valuable for them to really get the insight on on the world that salespeople live in. Mm, yeah, absolutely, and. Yeah, and I, you know, all these things we're talking about, I'm, I'm kind of saying how sales can help marketing, but it, it, all these things really go two ways. And, you know, our mm-hmm. world is more on the marketing side. Um, but yeah, there's, it, it doesn't necessarily matter who, if marketing's leading some of these or sales yeah. is leading some of these things. But, you know, if, if someone kind of takes that first step to, to do these things, you'll see a, a much oh, better. Yeah. No, I would say to any sales organization, instead of like whining about how marketing don't understand you is perhaps maybe introduce, like I said, invite some of them to your sales meetings and just say, look, it'd be good for you to listen in and hear what goes on. So um, instead of just whining about it, actually do something about it. Yeah. And so kind of to that point on the, the third tip there is, it, right, what you're saying in terms of giving constructive feedback from the sales team to the marketing team on lead quality and and those sources. A lot of times, what we see is the marketing team's working in their silo. They get excited. They find some new source. It's paid search or SEO mm-hmm. or some lead seller kind of thing, and they spend a ton of money on that. And then they, you know, 30, 60, 90 days go by, and they come back and they evaluate. Okay, how what was the close rate? What was the return? To find out that hey, it didn't really work. And that's where we start getting into the blame game and yeah. sales team, the, you know, the classic, the leads are weak kind of stuff. <laughs> and the marketing team saying, oh, you guys just can't close them. I mean, we've all yeah. been in the middle of that. But if, if we, like you were saying too, you know, collaborate a little bit more frequently and if the sales team is able to provide more in the moment of information about lead sources and quality, the sales, the, excuse me, the marketing team can start adjusting and saying, hey, maybe it's just isn't a good source or maybe there's something wrong. The messaging's off. This isn't the right mm-hmm. audience. And they can kind of tweak and adjust and do that on the fly instead of waiting again 90 days and then they have to answer to the spend and they're you know worried about their jobs so it's the blame starts going back and forth we just need to work together more frequently kind of in the moment every week yeah and i think that's one of the really um critical and important things that you just outlined there is that idea of you know when leads come through because yes it, it traditionally has been this case of marketing you know gets leads throws them over the big wall into sales and then sales takes them and then sales throws them back saying these were rubbish and then marketing goes yeah you can't close and uh, and the reality as you say is that it doesn't matter what the lead source is there's no magic bullet there's i have never found a lead source yet that you just sign up for it and it immediately gives you exactly the right fit lead and and sales can go wrong with it you have to go through a process of evaluating those leads and sales sort of saying yes there was the good things about this, but there were other things that were off about this. Maybe we need to go back. But to your point, that coll- it has to be a collaborative process. Otherwise, it's just never going to work. Yeah, no, that's that's the biggest part of all this. I think when you kind of summarize a lot of this, but it's just that collaboration because there's, again, the marketing team thinks like, hey, this is going to be amazing. And yeah, mm-hmm. the sales team feels something different and there's just not the two-way communication going. It just is this kind of never-ending cycle sometimes of that. But just like you're saying, though, that with that, you know, especially if it's coming more frequently, that feedback, the marketing team, again, can kind of adjust what's the messaging we're putting out there. Does it really align with whatever yeah. this audience lead source is and can adjust on the fly instead of waiting 90 days? And do we need to do more levels of qualification? Because that's the other thing. Sometimes, you know, sales will say, well, these leads just weren't the right fit. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we got them. But they don't give they don't give the right feedback to marketing to say, here's a number of other qualifying criteria that you might want to consider. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they, you know like you were saying with the different qualification kind of leads into that number four tip was... Mm-hmm the sales team ideally should be willing to kind of share like, Hey, what are our methods and processes we're doing? You know, even after a lead comes in, then what do we do with that? And sometimes it's, you know, the marketing team gets guilty of this too. They don't care. You know, they feel like, Hey, I did my job. I threw that over the wall. Um, But what we've seen work really well is when, again, those teams are working together on the different processes after a lead comes in. And we've seen that in different ways. Like even just within our own team here, we've seen that, um, our sales team, you know, we're doing their follow-ups or we're trying to contact leads as quickly as possible. And, you know, we're doing some of that well and some of it not well. And the marketing team, once they learn about that, we're able to use the CRM and automation tools to help automate some of those steps and put them in 
follow-up campaigns and nurture campaigns. And sometimes that's hard I've seen with sales teams because they want the control over that. But at the end of the day, I, what have we found really is that the salesperson just needs to trust that that stuff is happening and that they like what they're seeing. It's how they would do it. It's just that lack of, or they're that unknown that, you know, sometimes prevents that from happening. But if, if those two teams are working and the marketing team really understands, you know, what are some of the pain points the sales team's facing, they often have those tools, the email and automation tools and CRM to actually help, mm -hmm. you know, make that process a lot smoother for a salesperson where they can spend their time doing the things like actually selling and, and doing the important things that they need yeah. to do. And here's a, and, and and that's a that is another great point. And I think here's a, here's a great phenomenon that people should um, should look into. Um, as you say, when marketing start to and sales start to collaborate together, and maybe as you said in the CRM system, like in our CRM system, um, you know, market we have right the you know the the emails and that, and put them in. Then the salespeople can decide when to trigger those or whatever. But so they still have the control. But what they like now is they say, oh these emails work so much better than the ones I did myself because, you know, there's a little bit more maybe thought and research and marketing now that's gone into creating them. And so then you get this great kind of collaboration because you get the salesperson feeling like they've got the control of knowing what's going out, knowing when they want to trigger it, or even if it's in an automated process, they know what's happening. Um, they've seen the content, but they also see the, res they see the benefit of actually using the marketing expertise to create things that will, you know, resonate with the, with the receiver. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, all this kind of comes back and ties into the, the fifth tip, which is the one everyone's heard a million times, but no one actually wants to do. And it's keeping that bleep and bleep and swear word CRM up to date. <laughs> no one, yeah. It's one of those things that it's really just the hub of everything. And, you know, like you were saying with the different email uh, campaigns and, you know, if we're doing that, if we're keeping the CRM up to date, we're, being able to test that and at the end of the day, just seeing what's most productive and that benefits the marketing team. If they're getting a better return on their channels, you know, they look great and they have more money to spend and which in turn benefits the sales teams with more good leads at the end of the day. And so, you know, we've, we've just, we've gone through this ourselves. We've gone through it with a lot of clients and, you know, it's, it's not the fun part of the job often, but doing that and keeping again, the CRM up to date, it just, it helps the marketing team in so many ways because they're able to, pull reports and look at what's uh, converting, what's not, you know, mm -hmm. we converting things to SQLs and into opportunities and things like that. So um, again, that's, it, it ties really well with the fourth tip, but working together on that front and, yeah. and making sure that CRM is up to date, it helps, uh, you know, the marketing team, uh, you know, identify prospects that are maybe have gone a little cold and they can really help the sales team do their job and try to revive uh, accounts that maybe have gone cold. So it's again yeah. not the fun part of the job, but just so necessary. And if we could really drill that in as much as possible, I'm sure you're in the same boat. That's that's just what oh, we yeah. need to do. Yeah, and the thing is nowadays, to be honest, um, there's there's less and less excuses on that because of the you know how much easier it is to integrate systems and make them talk together. So you can automate a lot of things. You can also well, like we introduced in our CRM recently, is our our automation our workflow process engine we call the automatizer. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can automate a lot of things as well. So it's it's taking, you know, there's there's very little excuse now because there's a lot of things you can do that take away the manual effort. Uh, and therefore, you know, you can focus on the high value things and then you can report on them. Because like I said, one of the biggest uh, complaints, I think, that um, that marketing and even and even if you go beyond marketing, most product development teams have is that there's no loop right? It's like, you know, the product development would build something like marketing will market it, it the leads, it goes on to sales. And then they never find out, well, did the customers like it? You know, did this marketing, you know, did it work? This, so to your point is, I think the feedback loop is so incredibly important. Yeah, absolutely. And that's really the big part of it. I mean, that's the tech, technical side of it. And, and you know, mm -hmm. there's great companies like yours, Pipeline are out there making CRMs a lot simpler for sales teams. And like you said, so it should be less much less of an excuse, but if you kind of summarize all five of these things, it really comes down to communication. And so some of that's automated or even on the technical mm -hmm. side. And then a lot of it hopefully is that personal side. And there's just historically been this huge separation between the sales and marketing teams. And they only talk when there's a problem. And mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where we've seen really successful teams bridge that gap. And, and at the end of the day, it really is in everyone's best interest to, for those two teams 
to work together. And, and it's, you know, the, all the buzzwords of synergy and one plus one equals three, but that's really what you see when those teams work together, the ROA on marketing channels is better. The sales teams are closing deals faster and for larger amounts and they're, they're getting more leads. So again, it's, it's, uh, you know, hopefully it's one of those things that's common sense, but I just maybe encourage everybody to Hey, what are what are a couple of things we can do today, tomorrow, next week, next month to really bridge that gap between the sales and marketing teams? You know, and to be honest, I mean, we haven't done ourselves any favors over the I mean, both groups haven't done themselves any favors because we've always been looking at lines of demarcation and all of that. Like we marketing moves up to here and then it hands over to sales and sales go. And even the language you use, like we'll say marketing qualified lead, then it goes yeah. over to be a sales qualified lead instead of it really should just be a a company, a shared qualified lead. And so I think the, I think the fluidity of like, where does marketing start and, you know, and end and sales is we have to get over that and realize it's not, there's the lines of demarcation don't make sense anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, no, it's a perfect point. And I think marketing teams again are as guilty as anybody in this and mm-hmm. they, but they need to be open and involving the sales team in their campaigns and lead sources, educating them on what the marketing team's doing because that, sales team can help with messaging. They know the pain yeah. points and then vice versa. Sales teams need to be open to the marketing teams being somewhat involved in what they're doing, their workflow, what their pitch is. It, it's just that extra integration really helps both sides perform better at the end of the day. And so again, it's it maybe not a brand new concept, but it's one that people just still seem to struggle so much with. So it, I can't, you know, I can't think of anything that would have a bigger impact on most bro, on growth for most companies and bridging that gap. I mean, you could go spend another $50,000 on marketing or sales or whatever it is, but the efficiency gains that you get from getting these two groups working together is probably the biggest impact you'll have at almost no cost. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, that's the, that's the fantastic thing about it. Maybe the frustrating thing about it is you can do all of this at practically no cost by just getting working together. And the impact is so like exponentially outsized um, compared to what you, the input you need to make. So it just seems like a no brainer, but here we are talking about it again. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So any last messages uh, or you want to underline anything before we wrap up, Brian? No, I, I think that's great. We, again, you know, our, our company here at Big Leap, we kind of work a little bit on both sides of that. We are a digital mm-hmm. marketing agency, so we help marketing teams drive traffic, but we also are a, a HubSpot agency partner as well. So on that platform, we try to help in those other steps of sure. making those leads better. So you can, uh, you know, check out our website, at bigleap.com or add me on LinkedIn, Brian Phelps, that's Brian with a Y and happy to chat more about this if anybody has any questions. Yeah, listen, that's the, it's fantastic. And, uh, and it's interesting what you said, obviously, is you're working with a lot of companies who are now modifying or changing or evolving their messages because of the situation that we're in today. So, so it's a good time to, uh, for people to engage with organizations, with companies like yours to really make sure that they're on point, given yeah. that this is such a crazy, fluid situation. Absolutely. And we're, unfortunately, we're not a, a counseling center, so we can't really mend the <laughs> relationships, but hopefully we'll yeah. provide some best practices we've seen. But yeah, of course, if we can help bring in more more website traffic or even help bring that to the next step in the conversion and the automation side. And again, working with great tools like Pipeliner, especially, mm-hmm. uh, then we're, uh, you know, that's where we can help. But yeah, happy to chat. If Again, if anybody has questions, LinkedIn's the best place to catch me. Fantastic. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Thanks, Brian, again. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.